Well oh guys, welcome back to another video. Definitely in a different uh, setting, different fishery today. Last video was up at Lake Shasta, and today we're at the Delta. Two polar opposite fisheries. We were fishing deep, clear water up there. Now today we're fishing shallow, muddy water. One of my favorite kind of videos to make, and that is pretty much just a day on the water. No expectations today, just gonna try to go out, figure out the fish. I've heard it's been really tough on the Delta lately, having to do a lot of finesse to catch those fish, but uh, we've got our, our usual suspects today, chatterbait, crankbait, a jig, Heck, we even have a frog tied on just in case. But it is mid-March here on the Delta, so the fish should be moving up. They should be starting to feed. We can see the heron is trying to feed. It's always a good sign. I'm sure we'll see sea lions, all that great stuff. The Delta is starting to come alive. Yeah, I'm gonna take you guys with me today. Hopefully we can catch a few fish. Let's see what happens. Alrighty guys, first stop of the day. And we are going with the old chatter. 58 degrees right here. Water's a little clearer than where we first launched. It's an outgoing tide, so this water is dropping. So yeah, I don't know what to expect today. Like I said, we're gonna have to experiment, play around. We got some emergent grass over here too. So maybe we will actually throw the frog a little bit. Like I said, as long as the, yeah, I mean, it's the Delta. Man, it feels weird throwing a frog. I haven't thrown a frog in months. You know what, in a very odd way, I'm kind of disappointed I'm not seeing sea lions back here. Usually when the sea lions show up, that means they're following the, the fish, and those include the bass, back into the sloughs that are, you know, ready to spawn. So I haven't seen a sea lion yet, so might not be a good sign, but who knows? We'll uh, keep searching. Interesting. Been doing the chatterbait, been doing the, what else am I throwing? Throwing a frog, throwing a crankbait, and wouldn't you know, pick up the jig, and we get a fish. I'm just on a, it's the jig time of year apparently for me, and I am not going to complain. First fish of the day on the jig, thank you sir. plan today was not to travel nine miles on the delta to catch one 15 inch bass as always i fish i film i share with you guys and today obviously was a tough day i thought it would be good the conditions were looking like it should be a good day but i don't know i couldn't figure them out today just to give this video a little bit more bulk and something i've actually wanted to do for a while now is do an updated tour of my titan 10.5 pretty much my full setup my tournament setup the other reason i'm doing this video is because I get a ton of questions about certain things on the boat, the net, the GoPro camera, the fish finder, the seat, the tackle uh, trunk, all those things. So I'm gonna go over this entire setup and I will link every single one of these items on the boat in the description below. So hopefully with this video, I can just use it as a reference for people in the future that have questions regarding the setup or some of the gear on the boat. So let me put you guys on the chest and we will go from bow to stern. Let's start up at the front. And again, I'm gonna try to cover every single thing on this boat. First of all, you'll see that we have a custom front hatch. This is a lid. The wizard is responsible for all the, all the modifications on this boat, but the front hatch is a lid style. Um, comes up like that. And what I have in the front hatch is a Promar net, which actually just pops right out. So you can take it out. That is pretty much what contains the items in my front hatch. So what do I have in my front hatch? Got a marker buoy, turkey baster. Every so often I'll have a little bit of water inside the boat. Instead of having to flip the entire boat over. Easy as that. So that just stays in there. Marker boot stays in there. So my dry bag. What do I have in my dry bag? First aid kit. 
bag of tools, some glue, some shear pins for the propel drive, a couple extra tabs for the propel drive. We've got a few extra uh, seat screws, some things that to have just in case. Emergency blanket, some bug spray, and some sun gloves. This is the bag that I essentially don't think I'll really need very often. Then we have a couple of these boxes right here. This one has some seat stuff, an extra shear pin, some ties, some wet wipes, lure retriever, and a fizzer. This box has some more seat screws. I lose those things like crazy, so I always need extra. Some extra line, extra fish sticks. Got a rope in here. We got a scale. Looks like we got some moon eye jigs. I don't know why. And another uh, little plug knocker. So that is pretty much what's in the front hatch. Again, things that I don't really think I'll have to use on a daily basis, but they are there just in case. Oh, the handle. So the handle modification added a little extension. This is a Red One Systems uh, handle, which obviously makes it easier to pick up the boat and cart it around. So here's the net that I use. This is a G2 landing net with a modification of a one inch PVC handle. I'm gonna give credit to Matt from Yankee Tanker Outdoors for this customization. And again, I will link the net and the link for his video on how to do it in the description below. But an awesome net and I just sit it right here with a little roto grip to keep it in place. We've got the pedal drive, which obviously is standard for a lot of the native watercraft boats. Only thing that's different here is we added some BMX pedals and we added a weed guard. So a stop gap is what I believe that's called. So I'll link that as well. So let's look at the fish finder, new fish finder. You guys probably have seen from previous videos. This is the Raymarine Element 9 inch. Pretty much all the wiring through the seat. So you can see where the wiring goes through here got our plugs that go right in through the seat they come out here which is the transducer which I use the uh, ram swing arm transducer just can swing it down bring it up real easy and then our power actually comes out the back of the seat into the tackle trunk right below here is where I keep my hog trough nice easy place to to stow it away on the other side I keep my paddles I rarely need but they're there so they kind of just tuck away right there now you'll see that we have a seat frame too so we have a base those are measurements for the Titan um, again Ramel did that but I'm gonna link the website for that seat frame the materials um, you're gonna have to figure out the build yourself because again Ramel did it but uh, I will link the website as to where you can get the material and then of course we added to the bottom just to add a little bit more storage that's garbage basically for me a place to contain wrappers and used plastics so they won't fly away in the wind then the other side where i keep my 360 light tuck away and then one of my favorite features of the seat which again is a customization from the wizard is the junk drawer these actually typically go right here pens and dies and baits got some leader line in here and a multi-tool so the other side of the seat like i said we usually keep the pliers some scissors a donkey leash and then we have the Torquedo. So we've got the Torquedo control panel right here. This runs through the seat as well, down here, and then comes out the back. And again, everything is plug and play with the tackle trunk. Plugs into the tackle trunk here. The Torquedo battery is obviously housed in the tackle trunk. Throttle plugs in there. Then the power to the Torquedo itself. Right back here, we've got this little harness going along the length of the boat so you can easily Drop it down and then pull it up. Uh, wheel kit. Here's the Boondocks landing gear. Um, it's just a must for bigger boats. Oh, the back of the seat right here, we've got this hinged lid. It's pretty much where I just keep water, drinks, stuff like that. If we open the tackle trunk, you can see where all the electronics go to. What we have is divided it into like the electronic section and then the storage section. So as far as electronics, Oh, by the way, this is my terminal tackle box. Real small, but pretty much everything I'd ever need. This is just GoPro batteries, accessories, SD cards. So those two boxes pretty much lay atop right here. And then if we take this out, you can see where the batteries are housed. So we've got our Torquedo battery, and then we've got a 40 amp hour 
Baino lithium ion battery on the other side and again that's where we have the fish finder connected um, we've also got this little uh, USB unit as well as a 12 volt cigarette lighter port right now I've got a GoPro battery charger right here never have to worry about running out of GoPro batteries I also use this to charge my phone when I need to so very handy accessory to have on the water especially if you need some power now if we go around we can see that we actually have a few USB outlets on the outside one of which actually connects to my GoPro which is of course up here this mount is a mount that I found from YouTube it's a DIY mount and again I will link that video for this GoPro mount in the description below I have my cable running up to my GoPro right here I have a 128 gigabyte SD card in there and that pretty much runs me eight hours I don't have to fuss with it and it'll go all day because it's connected to this uh, battery source now in the back like I said I store all my soft plastics back here usually I have like a towel gloves a few extra granola bars of water that's the emergency water in case I forget to stock up the water in this side right now I've got baits pretty much set up set up for the Delta and the national championship in Louisiana so you know throughout the year these boxes will change I'll just show you right now what I've got here is jigs chatter baits and I use pretty much two sizes half ounce and three ace so everything that's a half ounce is on this side three ace is on this side again chatter baits jigs swim jigs you know football jigs that's that box here's my top water box so it is becoming spring in the Delta Louisiana there might be a top water bite who knows but we got all my favorite frogs and we've got some spooks and a popper and then as far as this box we've got crankbaits and then some jerk baits uh, lipless crankbait um, but yeah pretty much all shallow running crankbaits and again this is prepped for the Delta and Louisiana it'll probably change you know as the year uh, progresses but that's how I have it right now uh, there is one box that I didn't bring today and it's my swim bait box which has some ganterelles some s waivers uh, which I might throw and then this is just kind of a miscellaneous toolkit but a very handy kit so we've got extra phone charger uh, we've got some um, wave away which is great for cleaning graphs sunglasses stuff like that some kvd line and lure some fog strips whoop uh, some super glue some mend it electrical tape extra batteries yeah whatnot this is just a really handy thing to have and this is one of the things that you know I wanted and the wizard was able to do for me was have pretty much everything in one all my batteries in one all my baits lunch plastics have everything housed in one box and even though it looks like I have a lot of stuff on my boat it really isn't that much when I unload my boat or load it up I pretty much have my seat my trunk my torpedo and a few you know random things that I put on the boat but it's not much you know it's not much at all so I remember you know in the past I'd have like a million different things that I'd have to take from the truck to the boat and set up individually you know the torpedo battery a separate battery it's just kind of a, a lot and this just makes it a lot easier to set up and take down because as some of you may know for me I strip this completely every time I you know take it off the water it goes bare so having that you know convenience was uh was ideal for me yeah rod holders are in the back i've got eight rod holders as of lately i've been good and have only been bringing six to seven rods with me at a time so you know pretty much covers all my needs um as far as the rudder we did change that from the stock rudder we've got the uh, burley pro upgraded rudder uh cable and then we've got the boondocks extended rudder which is a must in my mind just it gives you better tracking because it's longer than the stock rudder and uh, you can turn uh you know sharper with this particular rudder so that is the other upgrade we have uh yeah i think that is it i think i covered everything and if i did forget something i am going to link everything in the description below so that I can use that as a reference for folks that are curious about certain certain mods or certain items but that is the video for today tough day not an in and out burger day but 
it was a tough day. So that is it guys. Thank you as always for watching. I hope this video was somewhat entertaining, somewhat informative. I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.